Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So we have some new projections in for what the increase will be like in 2025 for all beneficiaries of Social Security, whether you're a retiree, whether you receive SSI, or whether you receive SSDI. So we're gonna be going over what those increases might look like. Plus Trump's hush money trial picks right back up again today in Manhattan. And we have the first person who is going to be testifying for the prosecuting team. And then, of course, we're going to be going over some numbers of whether or not a prosecution for Trump will hurt his chances in the upcoming election and what that looks like right now versus the current president in Joe Biden. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $10,000 in free stocks or $10,000 in free cash in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Moomoo. All you have to do is once you click on that link is just sign up for a free account and then deposit at least $100. At that point, Moomoo will be sending you at least five free stocks worth all the way up to $10,000 if you'd really just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stocks, it's just sell them for what they're worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so diving right into our lead story of today's video. And of course, we do have the uh, recent numbers for inflation for the month of March. These were a couple of weeks ago, but we are going to be going over what that would mean if these numbers stay put. For all beneficiaries of Social Security, we're going to be going over some new projections for what the cost of living adjustment will be next year in 2025 and what that will mean for you, whether you're a retiree, whether you receive SSI, or whether you receive SSDI. So we are going to be going over some averages here. So according to the Senior Citizens League, the March CPIW, or the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Earners and Clerical Workers, came in at 3.5%. That's higher than the inflation trends indicated last month based on February CPIW data. Based on this trend, the Senior Citizens League is adjusting the long-term forecast COLA to 2.6% in 2025. According to TSCL's 2024 Senior Survey, the following results are based on 1,157 survey responses. So 43% report that household expenses increased by over $185 per month in 2023. 71% indicated their household costs rose more than 3.2% in 2023, the year uh, used to, to determine the COLA. 53% said they have spent their emergency savings and 61% indicated that food is their most increased expense out of all of their expenses. So let me know in the comment section below, how do you compare to all these people? Uh, are, are your costs also increasing by right around $185 per month if that's something that you're tracking? Is it more, is it less? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Now, of course, if we do end up actually having the cost of living adjustment, as they say here, of 2.6%, what exactly is that going to mean for certain beneficiaries of Social Security? Well, you can see right here what the averages are or what the maxes are, uh, depending on what you're currently receiving. So for SSI, exam uh, for SSI individuals, for example, in uh, this year, it is $943 per month. That is the maximum payment. And for couples, it is $1,415 per month. That is the maximum for SSI individuals and couples once again. So if we did have that 2.6% increase, that would boost the payments up to $968 for individuals and $1,452 for couples. And then as far as disabled workers, on average this year, they are receiving payments of $1,537 per month. With a 2.6% increase, that would boost those payments up to $1,577 per month. So roughly a $40 uh, per month increase there. And then as far as all retired workers, on average, this year they are receiving right around $1,907 per month with a 2.6% increase if that's what it ends up being. That'll boost those payments up to $1,957 per month. So that would be right around a $600 uh, per year increase or $50 per month. And then as far as those receiving the max benefit at their full retirement age, this year, in 2024, they are receiving $3,822 per month 
with a 2.6% increase that would boost those payments all the way up to $3,000. $921. Now, of course, we won't know for sure what this number ends up being until some point in the middle of October. That's going to be the date in which we know the CPIW numbers for the month of September. So basically what they do every single year is they take the numbers of the CPIW, the inflation numbers of the CPIW from, it's going to be the third quarter, which is going to be July, August, and September. And we won't actually get those numbers until one month later. So the numbers for July aren't going to be coming out until August. The numbers for August aren't going to be coming out until September. And then the September inflation numbers will be released in October. And what they're going to do with those three numbers is they're going to compare those three numbers to the exact same three months from last year in 2023. And if it increased, they're going to look at the, what the increase was by. If, if it increased by 2%, the, uh, uh, the uh, cost of living adjustment is going to be 2%. If it increased by 5%, the cost of living adjustment is going to be 5%, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, if the number actually goes down, if we actually see uh, you know negative inflation, you won't actually receive a negative cost of living adjustment. You'll just receive no cost of living adjustment at all, which we have actually seen a couple times over the past 15 years or so. Now, in some other news, of course, today we're gonna pick up, uh, pick right back up where we left off uh, last week in the uh, Trump hush money trial in uh, the state of New York, in Manhattan to be exact. And I, I guess David Pecker is going to be the first witness in Trump's hush money trial, uh, according to the New York Times and The Hill here. So Pecker, then the publisher of the National Enquirer, admitted to running a catch and kill scheme in order to help Trump get elected in 2016. The scheme consists of the unethical practice of paying sources not to tell negative stories about a subject, in this case, Trump. Pecker's media company paid $150,000 to actress Karen McDougal, who similarly claimed an affair with Trump at about the same time as the Daniels payments, the company then intentionally suppressed McDougal's story until after the election, citing a person familiar with the prosecutor's plan arguments. The Times reported that Pecker's testimony is expected to center on his conversations with Trump about the hush money payment. So basically Trump's argument is going to be here more so that he wanted this story to be covered up more to do you know, with his wife Melania not figuring this out. Uh, rather than him using, trying to cover it up to win the election. Um, so it's going to be tough for the prosecutor to prove that Trump was trying to push these stories down and not to be released uh, just to win the election rather than to keep his wife, uh, Melania, from figuring it out. So uh, we'll have to see what ends up happening on this trial. It's likely not going to be wrapped up until perhaps the end of next month in May, and this could very easily go into the month of June and possibly even July as well. And according to a recent poll, it actually shows that there could be some deep trouble for Trump if he in fact does end up getting convicted here. The max pr uh, prison time is going to be up, up to 40 years, uh, four years, uh, although most people believe that he's probably not going to get prison time if he is convicted. Now, according to The Hill, the poll released on Wednesday from Bloomberg and Morning Consoles found that 53% of voters in key swing states would refuse to vote for Trump if he were convicted of a criminal offense. A slightly higher share, 55%, say they would reach that conclusion if he were sentenced to prison. If those figures are accurate, they could easily decide the election given how Trump's two elections so far in 2016 and 2020 have been. The Bloomberg poll was conducted in seven states that will likely determine the outcome of the election. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Interestingly enough, the poll suggested that 20% of voters from those states who had voted for Trump in 2020 would either be, quote, somewhat unwilling or very unwilling to vote for him again if he were convicted. Now, alongside with that, right now in 2024, voters who have interest in election actually hit a new 20-year low, according to a recent poll. So a new NBC News poll revealed that interest in the upcoming election has dipped to its lowest level in nearly two decades, with only 64% of registered voters in the survey having a high level of interest in November's election. The poll results indicate a decline in those with high levels of interest compared to previous NBC News polls conducted at this time in the 2008 at 74%, 2012 at 67%, 2016 at 69%, and 2020 at 77% uh, presidential election. So obviously people are really not caring that much 
I guess people have already seen four years of Trump. They've already seen four years of Biden. And they, they know both of these presidents. And, you know, perhaps both of them aren't really all that popular. So people, you know, maybe they just don't care. They don't see that things are actually getting done in D.C. So they figure whether it's a Republican, whether it's a Democrat, not much is going to get done either way. And if we look at the uh, you know recent polling between Trump and Biden, of course, it's very much a toss up. Right now, Trump is having a narrow lead by 0.4 points. But obviously, we still have a long way to go before voting actually ends up taking place. So who knows what's going to end up happening here. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Do you think that Trump is going to win in 2024? Or do you think Biden is going to win for another four years? Leave your thoughts and comments below. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.